Hey, what is up everybody? Uh, Mikey F back here with yet another video. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I'm gonna try to get a video out sometime, well, now. Um, and yeah, so this video is actually gonna be about uh, something interesting that I've kind of been working on. Um, so on, on the org and on the forms and stuff like that, um, I haven't really seen anything on this, but I have seen a couple Facebook photos uh, just pop up here and there. One guy with this in a coupe in the first gen and then uh, second guy selling a white uh, SRT swap that had him in there. Uh, so I figured I'd pick a setup and give it a chance. What I'm talking about is caliber seats, Dodge caliber Viper style seats in a SRT4. You can see this isn't much of an SRT4 anymore. Just keep your eye out and maybe there'll be a video on why that is in a bit. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so let's get into it. I'm not just talking out of my ass. As you can see here, in here, it's bolted down. It's not going anywhere. It is actually installed. You can see this one, um, it, it fits great. And honestly, um, I, the seating position is fine where it's at. I believe this is as far forward as it comes, which is fine um, because I'm a taller guy. So I don't really need um, the room in the back. I need the room up front and then I can go back if I need to. Now this seat is a bit rough. You can see this bolster here. Um, she's nice and gone. Uh, and then we got some slight wear here. Um, and for that reason, it doesn't really super hold you tight because you can tell that the seat is a bit worn out. Um, but I also haven't really driven it yet. It's just been in this donor car. Maybe I'll give you guys a bit of a sneak peek if you can see it, it's dark outside. I don't know if you can. But uh, might be something going on with that red Chrysler there. It's um, yeah, so basically I want to show you guys how I went about making this, these seats and actually kind of film a video on it. Um, just so that in case you're wondering how you to do it, how to do it, bit of a video. Um, cause I haven't seen anyone post anything on this. I mean, there's a couple guys that have it done, but I mean, obviously it's just like building any other custom seat. You're building a custom seat. Um, all you really need is mounts and a welder. So I'm gonna get into it, kind of show you guys what I did, how I made them, and uh, yeah, let's start from there. Uh, the seats I'm using are actually, well, the donor seat for this is actually an SRC4 seat. Uh, I couldn't really get around it, and I'll show you why. So the reason it made it so easy to mount the other one uh, that I already have installed is because I just had SRT4 seats laying around from my wide body car that if you watch the channel, you know, um, those seats were done. Well, that, the driver's seat was done, done. Like, good luck fixing that. Um, the mounts that they use is a flat 90 degree mount. Um, reference, this is the seat out of that Chrysler. Now it's a 2002, so it's technically a pre-facelift car. Oh, the first generation of the second gens. I'm not sure if the second gen, second gen seats are like this, um, but this is why I can use these. I was planning on, I already sacrificed one SRT4 seat and I was planning on using this one out of the Chrysler next because I didn't want to sacrifice the clean one because this one's semi-clean. That's because if you look at this bracket here, it is mounted in a strange way, or at least a different way, mounts I have on the other one already. And I don't want them to come out looking weird. One's higher than the other, one's on a weird angle, because um, that's a really weird way to mount that seat. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and sacrifice the other, this is the passenger seat out of my Camo SRT4. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. Um, People aren't really looking for one seat on itself. So um, I have, I, I, I'm just gonna do it and just say, fuck it. Um, if need be, so it means someone could put these in a decoder or something like that. I know people do that. So um, the SRT four seats. So if someone wants them, they're gonna be for a custom project. I'll price them a bit less. The driver's seat's already fucked anyways. So but yeah, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna chop these off and I'll see you guys in a second. So I got the two top mounts off and Dodge actually did a huge favor. If you look there, they only welded the bottom part of the mount and then it just bolts on on the top. Just grind down these two welds on the side and unbolt it from the top. And now we've got our two front mounts. Even though this is the left, it's going on the right side because this seat is wider. So it's gonna sit like this, switch the sides around. We're not gonna reuse these bolts, but I'm just gonna keep them with there just in case. Now it's time to flip the seat around and move on to removing the bottom mounts. All right, and that concludes the bottom mounts coming off. You just grind down on both sides, just like this, boom, boom, and they'll come off. No, no bolts except for the uh, little limiting strap there so that the 
casters move in the same direction or at the same pace. But other than that, those are off. Now we got to grind off the ones off the caliber. Okay, now all the mounts are chopped off of the caliber seats. Gone ahead and chopped them all off. And I've cleaned up the sides where we're going to be welding, the top where we're going to be welding on all four corners. What we're going to go ahead and do now actually is take our mounts from the SRT4. Take the mounts from the SRT4. We're going to throw them into position here and bolt them down. So these are our front mounts. You go ahead and take those mounts. And as you may or may not be able to see, I have them switched around on this seat so that the uh, extended part of the mount, which is supposed to come in, because the seat is slim on the SRT4, it's supposed to come in. We're gonna actually gonna switch that so that it comes out and it pretty much lines up perfectly for where the rails are going to be sitting for the caliber seat, just like this. The rear is a bit of another story. So we're gonna basically bolt them in loosely and then we're gonna kind of kilter them off to the side like this. It's not the best way to mount them. Ideally, I would make a plate that comes out. Um, I just don't have the right metal right now. So this is gonna work and it's gonna be just fine. Um, I can reinforce everything later. Like I said, well, I don't know if I said, but I'm gonna get these things reupholstered and the brackets probably powder coated or painted at a later date. Um, these aren't going in the car right away, so I'm not too worried. I can fix things down the road. So the brackets are in. These ones are tightened down all the way. I got to grind some of this stuff off the side here of these as well. Um, and then the back ones I put in just tight enough so that they're flat and where they will be where they're mounted and then just enough to spin them. And then I'm going to come before I tack everything in place, tighten these down so they don't move at all. Um, and that we get the proper exact proper place where it's going to be when everything's tightened down. And basically this interior is garbage. I don't care about starting a fire in here, getting this carpet. I have a fire extinguisher. I know when to, when to use it. So um, this center console is garbage, but as you can see, the seats are gonna be really close to the center console. And because of the little um, thing they have there, you know, they don't come in contact with it, um, you know, where it's important near the shift or anything like that, but um, everything opens smoothly. It's just the seat belts are a bit tight up against it. So they do rub but not a big deal. Doing this the exact same way I did the other side and that's like this. I left the seat the way it was because remember, I don't have that strap to keep these two guys in line right now. So instead of twisting everything, I just didn't move the rail. Um, and I have plenty of room because I foresight. Um, I'm taking a level and I'm gonna go ahead to the front of the seat. You can see we're a bit off here. Um, now this is exactly where my other one sits as well. You can see we're kind of, it really just depends on where you are in the, in the cushion. Um, we're kind of off a tiny bit, but um, honestly that, that seat is a, like a tiny bit one way. You can kind of feel it when you're sitting in it. Everything's lined up on the mounts. So it's really just kind of, you know, you kind of got to deal with it. Cause it does, once you're in here, this feels normal. Like very comfortable, it's a very comfortable seat. Um, which I'm not sure how that's gonna be in the SRT4. I have a set of Viper seats in there now. My other one that, like I said, I'm making some videos on, I have a set of Viper seats in it. Um, neon SRT4 Viper seats, not actual Viper seats. But um, so it's, if I need, if I wanna sell these, I can sell them as, you know, uh, a drop in for a neon. Now they're not professionally made, but they're pretty good. Um, like it feels perfect. Like it's a nice cruiser. So, and that's what that car is supposed to be. So these are very good. They're a bit sportier than Fat Boys because they actually have, the bolsters on here that grab you because these are the Viper style caliper seats. Caliper has a fat boy too, kind of sort of style. Uh, but you know, a lot, I don't know if they're cheaper than fat boys. I haven't seen a set of fat boys go for sale recently, but they definitely, they give a good sense of you're in here. Uh, but they're also not like, you know, if you're a bit of a bigger guy, which I mean, I'm not, but taller, yes. Wider, no, <laughs> um, but I, I definitely fit in them good. And you know, they're nice. It's like the seats in my SRT8 um, 300. It's just a nice cruiser, man. Like you just, they're comfy. So um, yeah, but I'm gonna get to welding. I ahead and took the door off. It's definitely not something you need to do. It's just, I don't have a whole bunch of space and walking room um, in the shop with the door wide open and the welder pinched up here. So you can definitely do this without it. But again, I'd also recommend you remove your carpet um, if you're gonna be doing it this way. Um, I don't have measurements. Sorry, it's kind of an eyeball thing, but remove your carpet or be very careful and have a fire extinguisher on deck like me. So um, yeah, let's get to it. So like I said, I'm gonna make sure I go ahead and keep this thing close. It hasn't seen a fire yet. 
um, in quite a few years. So uh, fingers crossed, I don't do anything stupid, but it should be okay. And I'm gonna remember to open the gas this time because it didn't go too well for me last time when I didn't. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this straight to the vice grip. Oops. All right. First tack done. Yeah, she's on there nice and good. Now I'm gonna just tack the back quickly. Couple small fires, no big deal. Definitely a weird angle to be welding at, but we're just doing tacks for right now, so that's on there, so we're good. Now the other side. Perfect. If I didn't think that the carpet was gonna make such a big difference because it is a bit thick, I would have removed it. But this car is going to the trash anyways. I don't need a carpet. I know how to put it on a fire. So I'm gonna keep it like this. Alrighty, as you can see, not exactly dimes, but strong welds, it's gonna hold it. Same here, not exactly dimes. Welds on the bottom. Not exactly dimes either, but it's strong, so that's all I'm worried about. Gotta flip it to the other side, and then she's done, basically. Uh, and then it's just waiting to put them in my car once they get, once the driver's side gets reupholstered, the passenger side is actually really, really clean. All right, and that's the seat all finished up as you can see again you know not exactly dimes but they are strong welds they're going to hold and they're going to be perfect uh just trying to be careful i didn't want to go too far on the other side and then have it bubble up uh, with metal poking its way out because then it's going to fuck up the rail uh, but i actually learned a lot a lot from the other side um that was make sure you have the gas on um, that's a big one because <laughs> the welds look like shit they're strong but they look like shit i'll be honest um, two was uh, to clean your surfaces because I completely forgot to and I started one tack weld and I was like fuck I can't clean it now so just send it. it it's strong and it turned out good but this turned out way better and I'm actually proud of this work that worked not so much I might redo it later like I said when it gets reupholstered because I'll probably pull the rails off um, but at the end of the day it's strong it looks good no one's gonna be able to see it the other one this one you know you guys are seeing it that's good the other one not so much uh, but it's good, and I'm going to throw it in this car now, and then uh, when this thing gets scrapped, I'll pull it out. But yeah, let's, let's put it in, and let's get a view of what it actually looks like in the car. Actually, one more thing, i got to throw the seatbelt on from that neon seat over there, because these seatbelts aren't the same. Well, I actually ended up forgetting to film the outro to that video, um, but things went smooth, the seats were all in there. I wish I could have shown you guys what they look like. I have a picture, I might throw that up right now, uh, but in general, they look and like they look really good in there. So I'm waiting on getting the seats reupholstered right now. They're just sitting in storage. Um, but I might as well give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, nothing huge, because I'm hoping to have a full video come out on this. I didn't film anything making the car, uh, like putting it together, because it I just wanted to get it done, because I need this car. I don't need the car, but I'm trying to put this car away that I'm in right now for winter and pull it back out in the summer. And then this car is gonna be the winter car. Um, so I just kind of wanted to have it done. It hasn't snowed yet, so I haven't had a chance to, um, well, I haven't needed to go and get it registered and plated and everything like that, but I think I'll give you guys a bit of a sneak peek and you can kind of infer um, just from what the car looks like, exactly what's what's up with it. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll kind of leave you guys with this snippet um, of the car here, just from out the window, nothing huge, but um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.